Hello Statistical Scholars and welcome to another adventure with Minitab. Uh, so today I'm going to show you how to make a stem and leaf plot and then how to read the stem and leaf plot information off of Minitab so that you know how to do this in the future. So I already have the data needed to do this little worksheet notes for uh, this little demonstration I'm doing. If you don't have it and you go to, you can go to our, oh that is not the right web page, um, <clears throat> you can go to our course website and notice the notes are already on here, yay! And uh, if you did the previous video, you should already have the height data that I'm using today. So since I already downloaded it, I'm going to just open it from a file folder. Uh, so one little tip with Minitab, I'm going to split screen this so that I've got my notes on one side and then my Minitab on the other side. If you've ever used Minitab like this where you've moved it over to the side, notice that all of your buttons for your session window and for your data have disappeared. So if you want those back or if you've ever like accidentally shrunk a graph and now you need it or shrunk some data and now you need it, you can go up to the window screen and hit tile and it will automatically adjust the two that you have opened to fit in there. And look, mine switched. Ooh, that's fun. Normally it doesn't do that. <laughs> so yay, different things for different days. Um, so as I look at this, I am going to create a stem and leaf plot. The first one I'm going to do, I'm not going to use any incremental units. So you can just see what a regular one would come up as without it. So I'm going to go up to graph and we go down to stem and leaf plot. I always forget that this is all right here. I always try to look for it lower down, but it's not because I think it's going to be with all these plots. Because um, I think of it as a plot, not just stem and leaf, which is what let me mini tab and labels it as. And then notice you have some options in here and you choose height because that is the variable I want to graph. If you ever get that this box is a white box, you need to click into the area that you want to put your values into in order to get the variables to show up. There's also this by variable option that only works if you have two sets of quantitative data, if not if you have quantitative and qualitative like we have. So I'm going to show you how to deal with that too. And I'm not going to change my increment. I'm going to let, let Minitab choose my increment for today, which will probably pick one. Let's hit OK. Um, make the session window a little bit bigger. So notice uh, I've got the results using leaf units and increments. Notice the leaf unit here is used as one. Um, so as you look at this, the leaves don't actually start until the second column. These are your stems and here's your leaves. Oh, I'm sorry, that would be your third column, I guess. And then the counts over here are your counts totaling up to that value. So notice um, it's a sum up to that bin. So this first bin only has one piece of data in it. This next one has nothing in it, but it's counting the one that's previous to it as well, and so on and so forth. So this counts this second, or sorry, fourth stem down. It's counting 13, even though there are only 12 data points here. And if you don't believe me, you can count the number of sevens. There are nine of them, and there are three sixes. So there's 12 of these, but there's one over here. So one plus 12 makes 13. So it's counting up to. And then the last thing to note is that they put parentheses around the um, stem that has the median in it. So if you ever see this pop up, that's what you know what it means. Alrighty, so I'm going to actually change my VIN values to actually have two in it so that uh, this tightens up a little bit. Although this is a pretty good picture, the distribution looks nice and normal. There, I'd say our center is around here-ish, uh, and it looks like, um, you know, Minitab agrees with me. If I was to describe the spread, I could do that way in the range. It might be a little skew, just slightly, but probably not. Um, so let's go ahead and change our binning. See, I want to look for it lowered again. <laughs> All right, to two. And this will trim this up a little bit. It'll just look a little tighter, a little smaller. All right. Um, and now I'm going to use this to pick out what my highest and lowest value is. So my lowest value looks like it's going to be 51 inches. Tap that over towards more to the center. I always like to include my units in my answers. And then my highest value, if you look over here, is 79 inches. Woohoo! Now, this stem and leaf display is for both genders together, so I'm going to need to separate this in order to proceed forward into the next two questions. So I'm going to actually put my uh, graph right here in my Word document. Now when I'm going to paste for Minitab, I always choose Keep Source Formatting because it makes it look like the Minitab output and therefore it's nice and clean. However, if you change formatting, especially with the stem and leaf plot, notice how some of these um, fives look wobbly and the sixes look wobbly. Things just don't line up nicely if you don't use the Minitab formatting. It's nice and tight. However, as you can see, Word definitely thinks you don't know what you're talking about, which is kind of fun. Um, so now I'm going to get into how to do this for two different genders. Now I'm going to enter down a little bit further so we can keep this separated. Keep it separated. Uh, I'm actually going to use a subsetting technique to separate my two genders and um, 
I'm sorry, I'm not going to use subsetting. I'm actually going to use splitting. So if you go up to data, you notice there's this option to subset. That's how you can grab a smaller group of data off of your data um, to give you a subset. It's almost like sampling, but not. There is a sampling option. And then what I really want is I want to split. Because I'm going to take my worksheet and make it two smaller worksheets, one for females and one for males. So I'm going to take my height variable. I'm sorry. I'm not taking my height. I'm taking my variables and splitting them. So it's split by sex. And there's options to choose by levels, but we're, we don't have that. We're not going to have a secondary level, so we're good. We just have one. And notice that it gives you the data for both male and female. I don't actually need the male one, so I'm going to actually delete that. I'm just going to close it because I'm just doing for females today. Alrighty. And then let's go ahead and tile a few things make this easier to look at. Well, and I don't really need this one anymore, so it's goodbye. All right, so I've got my female data right here. Another thing to be careful about is if you have multiple worksheets floating around, aka multiple data sets, uh, make sure the one you're working in is the one you actually want to be highlighted. So notice how this is darker, whereas the session window is not. This is the one you're working in, and if you look at the heights data, notice how it's a little bit faded. Um, because that's the one I want to be working in. So I want to be working in heights. That's the one I want. So now I'm going to create a stem and leaf plot of just the height variable off of this data set. I'm going to leave the two incrementer on. Actually, you know, I'm going to turn it off. Let's see how it looks without just one. And we're going to hit OK. And there is our heights for just ladies. Now, if I want to answer these questions, I can say, ooh, um, how many and you know you're dealing with just ladies because notice these numbers are smaller. And in particular, we also have um, fewer values. We. All right. So as I look at my stem and leaf plot, a uh, number of people that are between 61, I'm sorry, 51 and 61 inches inclusive. So I want to make sure I include everybody. So I want all of this data. So I want everybody up until here, till I hit the end of this stem. So that's actually 36 people. Woo now to do 60 between 60 and 64, I'm going to be a little more careful. So um, notice 60 starts at 36 and then I want 64, which doesn't include everybody up in this column. So I got to be careful. So I've got 60. <laughs> you could just go through and count all of these. And that is one way you could do this. Or you can figure out how many are above and how many below. I'm just going to, you know, figure this out using math skills. So um, if this is 56 and that's 38, you could subtract 38 from 56 to get how many people are in here. That's one way to do it. Um, or you could just add them all together. That works too. So like, how many do I have? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight of them. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight of them. And then here I have well, this is just going to be 36 minus 19 because it's everybody. Oh, no word. Because it's everybody who's just in this column. Um, AKA these seven people. And then you'd have to add up all these. This is kind of pointless that I'm counting these. One, two, three, four, five, six. It's so fun to watch your teacher count. Nine. Oh, wow. Okay, whatever that happens to be, you can add stuff. Um, I should have picked different numbers for this. Regrets. Anyway, so you add those all up, and you figure out how many people are there, and there you go. That's about all I have for you today. So hope you enjoyed this video on making stem and leaf plots and learning how to split things up. Yay! Oof, 10 minutes of this. Mistakes.